Welcome to my shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. Today I'm going to rebuild the top lid on this Ford 3000 tractor behind me. The techniques that I show will apply to both a 2000, 3000, and 4000 series tractor. So if you have one of those, you will want to follow along. Now, if you've said any of these things about your tractor, if you said, my three-point arms will lift up on their own, but as soon as I put implement on my three-point arms, it no longer has the power to lift. If you've said, when my tractor has a load on the three-point arms, it slowly drifts down on its own and won't stay up. If you see hydraulic oil seeping out in between the top lid of the, or the transmission housing, if you think that your hydraulics are just generally working slow or kind of sluggish, if you've already troubleshooted and know that your pump is working and your pump is also bringing hydraulic fluid up to the top lid, but then the three-point arms aren't working, then the top lid is the repair that you need to do. So go ahead and follow along. My dad, Dan, and I are going to work together. We're gonna to rebuild the top lid, replace the safety valve and the relief valve, and show you the complete process along the way. So let's get to work. This plug is the plug I was referring to that will help you test if your pump is working and pumping hydraulic oil all the way up to the top lid of the tractor. So you could remove this plug and start your tractor up and see that the oil shoots out. It will actually come quite high, so make sure you're ready for it. And um, you can test to see if you are getting hydraulic oil to your top lid through that plug. This plug is also where you would put a gauge on your system if you ever wanted to test and see what kind of hydraulic pressure you're getting from your tractor. If your tractor does not have this block off plate and instead has a remote hydraulic kit, then you won't have, it'll look slightly different. But the thing to pay attention to is that the bolts, these three bolts that hold the cylinder onto the top lid do need to stay intact. Don't remove those. Only remove the bolts that are around the perimeter so that you can free up the top lid. And then once you have it freed up, go ahead and lift the top lid straight up and off of the tractor onto a bench to help you work on it. This is quite heavy. It takes two people to lift it, or if you don't have a buddy to help you, then you can use a cherry picker to um, connect onto the top lid and help you lift off safely so that there's no accidents since it is quite heavy. Once you have it off, we're ready to flip it over and start taking it apart. You can take the few bolts off of your block off plate here. That'll lift off. And then there's just a couple more bolts here that hold the cylinder into place. Our next step is we want to free up that cylinder. There's one underneath that black off that you can't forget about. Once you have all of those, you can flip that over. Can I help you? Yeah, I just, there it comes. Okay. There we go. Flip it over and our cylinder should be loose. Nope. We have one linkage up here. Let's put it all the way on its back so okay. the camera can see really good. Let me grab all the way down that side. Ready? Yep. Oops. Okay. Now. This will kind of set off to the side, and then the cylinder looks like it's loose. It is. Let's just lift that out of there. That the ramrod the, is in the middle that bell on the piston. The there we go. You got yep, it? I got it. Okay. And there's the top. So the cylinder's off, which has the piston inside, and we're going to disassemble that next. To get the piston out of the cylinder, you'll need to use a blow off nozzle towards the back here and just apply a little bit of air pressure through that hole until the piston shoots out. Notice that I set up a block because I don't want that to go flying across the shop and hurt anybody. So you can do the same. It's this hole right here and then your piston will come out so that you can put a new seal on there. I am choosing to remove the safety valve from my cylinder. You may choose to do the same. When you replace yours, just make sure that it either has a metal washer or an O-ring washer behind it. Some people will replace their safety valve just because they want to do a thorough job and replace um, as many parts as possible. And if that's you, you can go ahead and replace it. However, it is rather durable. Typically, if your safety valve is bad, you will have hydraulic pressure at the pump, but you do not have pressure underneath the seat at that plug that we talked about earlier. This isn't the only thing that would cause that uh, symptom though. You could also have a bad relief valve in the bottom that we'll talk about later. You could have a problem with the O-ring in between the top lid and the housing. And the tube that comes up there has O-rings on both ends. It could be Yeah, also so possible. there's many things, but safety valve could be one of them if that's the symptom you're having. I'm gonna start disassembling this, but I've already got a little bit of a head start. I took the bolts out ahead of time. This is the up and down spool right here. It gets stuck. If your tractor has the problem where it lifts the implement up and you put the lever down, nothing happens. This is what's stuck. The oil just simply uh, is off here. And when you open the valve, the oil runs past. The other part of this valve that people don't take the time to fix is the next little valve down further. 
This valve here down further is a little more trickier to get this valve out. Rachel's took the exhaust off the back, so there's two bolts on the back side. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see. And I went ahead and took the plug out of here. There's a plug and it just has a fine thread. It's a 3 8 bolt fine threaded. And what you'll see on the back of the pump is just this plug with that hole stuck in here like this. You have to pull that out. Now there's a puller to do it. I'm trying to think of ways that people can do this at home. So it's just a 3 8 bolt fine thread. I threaded it in to the end of it and I took a hammer and just simply tapped it out. It's pressed in there pretty good. Once you get that out, then the valve that we're talking about is inside. So I'm going to just take a screwdriver I'm just going to push the valve out and there's the valve that, that also gets stuck. This doesn't have much spring pressure to make it move. So I'm going to put it back in the hole. There is a bushing inside here. I, I don't like to take that bushing out. You drive the bushing out, you drive it back in, there's a chance of mushroom in it, then you will have a valve stuck. So leave the bushing inside. All we're trying to do is clean this up. So I'm pushing it back in and you can see I can move it with my finger back and forth. That is what we're trying to accomplish is to, to move that easily and that freely. So I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to put my plug in behind it with the threads facing out and I'm going to clean this up with a scotch Brite pad. If it has any type of um, grooves in it, I'd be concerned about that. But this one's real nice and then I'm going to lube everything up here because you don't want to put this together dry and we'll put it back together. For your piston, you have two different options. You can replace your piston and put a new one in like I am, or if your piston appears to be okay, then you could likely reuse it. Go ahead and hone the cylinder, make sure that that is uh, clear of any grooves. And then for your piston, you need to, even if you reuse your old piston, you should, should still put on a new leather and O-ring. Now, all pistons come with an O-ring and they all come with a backer. The three inch pistons, like mine in front of me, have this style of leather backer. The larger pistons have a nylon backer like this one, but all of them have the O-ring as well. Now, if you purchase the top lid gasket kit, it comes with the O-ring in all three sizes of pistons and the backer in only the two smaller sizes. So if you have a tractor that has the three and three quarter inch piston and you need a new backer, you will have to purchase that separately from the gasket set. If you need a new piston, they are only available in the three inch or three and three quarter inch size at this time. When you put your leather backer on, you can soak it in water beforehand. That helps free it up so that it will slide onto your piston easier. The leather or the nylon backer always goes on the bottom and then the O-ring goes on top of it. It's a tight stretch here. Can you give me a hand here? Yep. Ready? There we go. Okay. Then my leather, because I had it soaking so long, got a little bit loose. So I'm just going to make trace it around here and make sure that it's in the groove where it should be all the way around. Once I have this secure, I'm going to put a little bit of lube onto it or oil, and then I'll drive it in. I'm going to fix this before I put it in, but it'll go in in this direction. And then you can just use the handle end of a hammer to drive it all of the way into the cylinder. I reassembled the cylinder here, and this is the exhaust out the back where the oil exhaust out. I put that plug back in. I used that fine threaded bolt to drive it back in. I made sure with a screwdriver that it works freely. And then also this plunger here works freely and everything gets tightened back up here. When you are ready to make this repair on your own tractor, you will need to order some parts. A few of the parts that we offer are on the table in front of me and I wanna show them to you. This here is a gasket set. It comes with both sizes for the uh, piston O-ring and backer, as well as various O-rings and your top lid gasket. You can purchase just the gaskets or you can purchase gaskets with a piston. Either way, just depending on what you want to replace on your tractor. We also offer a relief valve and a safety valve. Those two parts are easily confused because of the terminology is so similar, but this one we always call safety and this one we always call the relief valve. Lastly on the table here, we do have this draft control plunger. If you realize that yours is rusted or if the threads are bad and you want to replace yours, we offer as a replacement part. All of these pieces are available on my website, which is farmtractorrepair.com. Your purchase on my site helps to fund future tractor tutorials. The next thing we're gonna do is replace this pivot pin. If your tractor lacks draft control, meaning that it really only wants to be all the way up or all the way down, no in-between position, then go ahead and check your pivot pin and see if it's worn. It rides on this cam here and with a lot of use, they do get worn. So here's how you remove it. We're taking a little socket that's just the right size to wrap around it. And then I'm gonna come around the front here 
and with my dad holding the socket to the side, I'm just gonna put this pry bar right behind it to just kind of hold it up and into position. Then we're taking a punch on that side and we're just gonna drive it all the way out. There it is. Okay, so I'll take the pry bar out first. Oops, okay. the socket fell down and I could see the pivot pin was inside there. Well, it's out, I guess. It is way back here. Okay, here's your new pivot pin if you wanna get started on yep. how to replace that. And the pivot pin has a bullet head on the one side and flush on the other. If you put the bullet head up there, it kinda helps get it going. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put the socket behind it with that pin as soon as Rachel get that socket out of there. It's stuck good. If I it's went and got good. you a magnet. Yeah. Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. So here's our old pivot pin. It's going to come out of the socket. There we go. The old one's out. And then we'll just reuse the socket to drive that pivot pin right back, back in in the same manner. So I'm behind it. Do you still have the new pivot pin? I do. So you okay. can just put the bar in there. I got it. Your middle finger's in the way. There you go. Okay, so now we got something because we're trying not to bend this arm. We're just going to put it right back in. This is the challenge to try to keep it all together here as you're pounding it so you don't bend the rod. Okay. I'm going to switch it just one hammer, ready? Right? Almost there, we're getting close. It's definitely started. It's in there the are good ways, yeah. I get the magnet this time. Oh, it's so much easier. our new pin. Let's talk about the symptom of shaking hydraulics. Mm -hmm. So if your hydraulics shake, it can be one of multiple reasons. One reason could be this pin that's in my hand. This is called the plunger guide. That's yeah. the proper term for it. This is one of the bolts that is involved with the seat going into the top lid. So if you remove your seat from your tractor, this is the bolt you're going to take out. There are two bolts and it's important that you get them in the right order. This plunger guy goes in the back and just as it sounds, it goes right into the plunger and holds the plunger still that comes out the back of the tractor here. So if you don't have this guide, your plunger will be shaky. What would be some other reasons why your hydraulics could be shaky? Uh, the pump that we talked about yes. in a rebuild, one of the plungers being bad, causing that to shake because it's missing one of the plungers. Yes. Um, like really a, fell, popping in and on, popping out. Uh, uh, yep. The piston, bed. if the O-ring in your piston was bad, that could cause it to work and not work, kind of be intermittent. Maybe yep. it would be a better word for that than shaking. A, if you had a heavy brush hog or a heavy box blade on the back, it would go up and then it would come down and try to correct. Mm -hmm. It would constantly be correcting. And that's typically the piston ring being bad or a relief valve. Yeah. So the, if the, you have that symptom, it's fairly common. We get a call about that from time to time. Yeah. And it's not always just one thing. Be, well, check one of these two or three things. So if you have a shaking hydraulics, check one of those things we just mentioned. Don't forget to replace the O-ring that's right here on your high pressure tube. Here's my old one. And you do get a new O-ring in your top lid gasket set. So you have it. Go ahead and put it on. Then you can replace the O-rings that are in the bottom of the cylinder here. So I normally like to lay out all of my new O-rings in front of me and then take them out one at a time and just guess at what the right size is. Yeah, that's a good fit and go through here just to make sure that I don't miss one and I can get the right size in there. So there's five here in the cylinder that you can go ahead and replace. And then once you have them in, you can set your cylinder onto your top lid and um, just make sure when you flip it over that none of your O-rings fall out, that they stay in position where they should be. And then you can put it on. Before we get ready to put this lid back on, there's a friction plate here that really um, is easy to change, makes it a lot nicer when you're working with the tractor to lift the implement up and down. So just take the end of your arm off here. There's a special flat washer there that you got to save. And this thing is grooved with a slot in it. And it comes right out and then this disc 
This one's really bad, so we're going to peel this disc off. <sighs> That's the old one. And then the new cork will go on, and it'll have, actually, it's a little bit thicker, so it'll add a little more friction to our job here. So put that back on. Got to remember to get this groove over top of that in. Drop it into the slot. There it'd be. Got the flat washer. Goes on first, then the spring, and then the nut. I replaced all of the O-rings in my plate and also cleaned the surface. There's no gasket here. It's just O-rings, so make sure that you replace all of them. If I remember correctly, I think I counted eight of them when I was replacing them. Do the same sort of thing that we did before. We just lay out your assortment and match them up for the appropriate size. If you have trouble where they're falling out when you flip it over, you can take just a touch of grease and put it underneath the O-ring to help hold it into place. With these three bolts attached, I'm going to tighten them up and then we'll be ready to put this top lid back onto the tractor. I'm on the bottom of the tractor and I wanted to show you where the drain plug was. It's right in front of the hitch here because there's another drain plug up further. You want to get the drain plug that's for the transmission hydraulics. It's right here. These plugs are rather unique. They have a magnet on the back side of them. See the magnet that sticks out there? That magnet gets all the metal or any metal that comes up in there out. On the bottom of the tractor is the actual relief valve itself. It takes an inch and 3 16 socket to get this out. So I'm taking the relief valve right out of the tractor. Make sure I got a pan under it here. There's the old relief valve and we sell a new one and we're going to stick a new one in and just use an inch and 3 16 socket and it's simple as that, put it right back in. I put the washer on there first before I put it in. The relief valve on this tractor, if the tractor of the hydraulic system quit working and had no pressure and you weren't getting oil up to the top where that test plug is, this is most likely where it's blown. Don't forget about one O-ring that goes right here. It's often overlooked, but it's quite essential. And then on this tube here, there's also a one O-ring on the top and the bottom right here that come in your top lid gasket set. So you can use a pick to remove those and put them on. And then your top lid gasket here only goes on in one direction and this dowel will help guide you on. Once you have that here and you have your um, tube back into place, then you're ready to set your top lid on. As you set your top lid onto the tractor, try to just set it down in one spot, exactly on the spot that it needs to be. Don't move it around because if you do, then you run the risk of damaging the gasket or getting it uh, crimped a little bit. So just be careful, set your top lid on and then bolt it down. You should add oil to your system now. This tractor calls for M4864A. It's a type of oil and the label will say that on it. Not all hydraulic fluid has that rating, so make sure that it has that label on it before you pour it in. It's a lot easier to put it in here than try to get it through that little hole. So this is how we're gonna add it, right here, just like this. Six gallons. If you need a new lift arm pin because you damaged yours while taking it out or you discovered it was extremely rusty, you can purchase new ones. They're very affordable. And then they just um, slide right in. You just drive them all the way through. And then you put a little pin in the end to hold it into place. My tractor is back together. So now I'm gonna lift the lever and you can see the three point arms come right up like they should. They're uh, working well. And this is the repair that I like to see when we are finished. Thank you for following along on this repair. I hope that you found it helpful and that after watching this video, you have the confidence to repair your own top lid. I'm confident that you can do it if you just have ordinary shop tools and a little bit of mechanical inclination. We do offer a manual if you want a book to follow along with that would have more information than what we've been able to include in this video. So you can order that on our website. It's a good idea if you don't already have one. Please subscribe to our channel so that you get an alert every time we release a new video. And then also look for the companion pump rebuild video that goes along with this top lid video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>